hey everyone, welcome to Monroe Live. My name is Scott Hoffman, and today is going to be our first session of Ask Monroe. Uh, a little bit shorter in form factor and duration than some of our other ones. Basically, we wanted to open up an opportunity to address questions that we get through the channel. And one of the topics, specifically, that's come up a few times lately is Tesla's charging ports and what's going on with those. They've been in the news. Some people might be wondering why, what's going on. We're going to do our best to kind of unpack that a little bit, give you a bit of a hot take, and ultimately talk about you know, what this Tesla charging standard is, what those parts look like, how that compares to some of the other, uh, well, the other charging standards that currently exist, and uh, talk about what we th think it might mean to, to different audiences uh, that are impacted by it. There was a press release from Tesla whereby they came out and said, hey, <laughs> two main things. One, we're renaming our charge port and plug to NACS, which stands for North American Charging Standard. So they gave it kind of a nice generic sounding name. And the other big news with that is they are opening that design up for other people to be able to use at their discretion, which is kind of a big deal because up to this point, Tesla's charge plugs have been proprietary to them. So both the male side that comes, you know, on the what plugs into your vehicle and the female side on the vehicle, unique, proprietary to Tesla. So no one but them was using it. Um, so what does that mean that they're opening it up? How does that compare to other options? They made this press release. They said, hey, our, our ports outnumber other people's two to one in terms of vehicles that are in North America. We've got over 20 billion EV charging miles on this. Uh, it's lighter, it's more cost efficient, it's more weight efficient. We think everyone should consider this. So we're gonna put our CAD up, put our tech specs up and basically invite everyone to consider using this on their vehicles instead of combined charging standard. One. I don't, I usually just use the acronym. Anyways, most OEMs use this CCS1 port. And we're gonna show an example of what that looks like here. But basically Tesla said, hey, we've got this port. Everyone else is using something else. Why not consider ours? And critically, they've said that they have approached certain network operators, so charge station providers, to consider adding their ports in. So kind of, kind of shaking things up and people are wondering, okay, what does this mean? So let's start off by looking at some of the parts physically. So Tesla talks about their port and what it looks like and they say it's kind of slim profile. So in addition to their CAD, which they have on their website, uh, you guys can go to this link, check it out. We'll probably upload some, uh, some shots of that. But essentially what you're seeing on the paper there is represented physically on the part here. So this is a Tesla charge port. It's removed from the vehicle at this point, but you can see there's just a single plug here and we're gonna reconstruct some of this, but basically this handles both AC and DC uh, fast charging for the vehicle. So it is unique in the sense that it's just a single uh, orifice, if you will, and comparing to the CCS1 port uh, that is used widely throughout North America for all the other OEMs, it has more of a sort of stacked profile where you've got your DC fast charging components on the top, and then you've got your AC, um, AC charging for level one, level two, Actually, this is the bottom, this is the top in vehicle. It would look like that. So as far as the housing itself, this one, a little bigger, uh, not quite as compact. Um, and then it would stand to reason that the plugs that accommodate this also follow that same sort of strategy. So we don't actually have a DC fast charge plug in house. This one is just a level uh, one AC charger, but essentially these plug in here, if this were a DC charger, um, it would have a bottom component as well, and the, the whole profile of this handle would be quite a bit larger. Um, so if we compare that to the Tesla plug here, a um, little bit slimmer profile, just a single head on it. Um, and then for DC fast charging, although this one's just AC, it would plug in. And so whether it's DC or AC um, charging, it's going to look the same mechanically speaking. It's just the same one that charges in. So right now, uh, if you go to a Tesla supercharging station and you use their DC fast charging, you're plugging this in. On any other vehicle in North America, if you go to a fast charging station, you're going to have a plug that is roughly twice the size of this uh, and is going to basically occupy both of these ports at the same time. We'll probably drop in some images of what that looks like so you guys can get a better feel for context. But spatially, if you compare the two, um, it's... It, you know, it doesn't take <laughs> a brain surgeon to, to figure out that there's just, it's more space efficient, right? There's less material being used uh, on this one versus this one. Uh, some of this is just a surround, but the actual port itself is quite compact, comparatively speaking. And what that can open up for OEMs and what Tesla chose to take advantage of was when it's a little bit smaller, it packages tighter, um, and it can be hidden in things. So if we put this on here, this is part of the rear tail lamp assembly on the left side of the vehicle. And this is where they choose to sort of hide their uh, charge port. Basically, your tail lamp is on the vehicle like this. And when this is closed, uh, you know, you've got it essentially concealed from view. 
whereas the larger CCS1 combo port typically goes in a housing that looks more like your conventional fuel door, right? So larger, kind of run of the mill, replaces the fuel door, if you will. So that environment that it lives in, a little bit of a change, definitely more compact. And we have, right, part of what we do at Monroe, we tear things down, we analyze the designs, we look at the costs associated with those, weight, packaging considerations, and objectively speaking, the Tesla port is more space efficient, it is certainly lighter, and it is certainly less costly by comparison to the CCS1 ports. On the vehicle, you know, right, it's more compact, it weighs less, certainly might be, uh, or is less costly. Those are advantages, but not every audience is as keen on thinking about those. So there's kind of different groups that I think we should think about here when we consider the impact. One group I'd think about first would be operators of charge port stations, right? So if I have a station, much like a gas station, right, where I've got the option to put in CCS1 ports or Tesla NACS ports, uh, what do I want to choose? Now, if I'm a charge port operator, I think it's advantageous to me to potentially offer both, right? This is going to attract Tesla folks that might not have otherwise come to my station. Um, and if other OEMs start to adopt it, again, that audience just grows. Now, I do think that for most Tesla owners, there's probably some, uh, a, some amount of utility or joy that's extracted from charging among other Tesla people and sharing Elon stories at the Tesla charging stalls. So it's unclear how many people will actually go to the non-branded stations. But at the very least, from a charge, charge station provider perspective, it seems like a win-win, right? The ability to offer more of those ports and accommodate more vehicles seems like a no-brainer. The other audience I would probably want to consider is charge port manufacturers, right? So companies like Aptiv, uh, TE Connectivity, Phoenix Contact, those that currently make CCS1 ports that are on other vehicles, now all of a sudden these guys need to consider whether or not they want to start producing the NACS, continue producing these, only do this, only do that, reject this. It's something that now folks who are tooled up at a given standard have to consider what they want to do. Um, they're gonna be looking for regulatory guidance. They're gonna probably be pulling OEMs to see what they're doing, uh, but ultimately they're probably gonna have to, probably gonna have to make some leaps and make a decision as to whether or not they wanna go in this direction, um, you know, because nothing happens overnight, right? It takes time to tool stuff up and manufacture it. The next audience I'd wanna consider is automotive OEMs, right? So other folks, Ford, GM, uh, you know, Stellantis, Volkswagen, what are they gonna do? Now, this is interesting, I think, so right, there are plenty of vehicles on the road that already have a CCS1 port, and, and I should have mentioned this earlier, this one's from the Mach-E, very similar to what you'd see, again, it's a standardized port on any vehicle uh, in North America that has AC and DC charging capability. Uh, but basically, for other OEMs, it would be a little bit difficult at this point for them to just make a wholesale shift because they've got vehicles already on the road with those, and in some ways, I think there would be some reluctance to go to a standard that was developed solely by Tesla because in some ways that's kind of saying it's giving a nod to them, right? It's saying they know what they're doing, they did it right, we're going to do that same thing. And I know that at least at some OEMs there is a natural aversion to making that admission. So that said though, I, I could see some considering to adopt it, but, it, but to, to change it on a vehicle that's already launched, it would be a pretty big tear up, right? It would mean redesigning and repackaging essentially what was here and what fit in this port uh, changing it to accommodate that. It would be retooling, it would be redesigning, it would be revalidating and uh, resourcing. Every other reword you can think of would be involved with making that change. So probably not something they're gonna do for vehicle platforms that are already mature and on the road. Maybe something they'd consider for the future. But where I do think we might see more adoption of the, the NACS, the Tesla style plug, would be maybe with smaller or startup OEMs that are still coming to market. And we know of at least one, which is Aptera, who's excited about that news, had retweeted it when the, when the announcement came out. We know that that's something that they were considering for a while, and now they're you know, full steam ahead in that direction. So I would think maybe with smaller or startup OEMs, they might try and use the Tesla port to steal a little bit of that Tesla swagger and, and kind of run with it. Uh, so I, I think we could, you know, I, we probably will see some of that. Um, the last audience I want to consider uh, is just consumers, right? How does this affect, affect people that drive cars? Um, ultimately, like I probably wouldn't necessarily buy, say, an ICE vehicle, right? If, if the gas handle on one at the pump was a little bit bigger than the other, it probably wouldn't influence my decision to buy it or not. Uh, the Tesla design is a little more elegant. It is a little bit more efficient. But in, in terms of it driving a decision to buy a vehicle, probably not. Um, 
as we mentioned earlier, that's not the limiting factor in how quickly your vehicle charges. So I don't think it's going to massively shift people's buying behaviors, but you know, we'll see. Uh, this is kind of an exciting time. Tesla's definitely shaking things up in terms of doing this. And yeah, ultimately we'll see where this shakes out. But uh, you know, these are the kind of things that us engineers get fired up about. So again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, further questions on this, we'd love to go deeper. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I think hashtag Ask Monroe is the, is the best way to get in touch with us. Uh, and we look forward to doing more videos like this soon. Thanks so much. Yeah.